Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I'm on a road trip. Got to drive at least an hour to pick up an aquarium. It's a 240 gallon tank, eight foot long, two by two. And the stand, I'm in my van, cause that should fit. And uh, yeah, stay along for the adventure and we'll see what other trouble we can get into today. So I just picked up the tank and I could not be more shoehorned into here. Eight foot tank back there, got the stand, got wood on top. Picked up some gobies, that'll be cool. So make sure you stay tuned, I gotta get those in a tank. And I could not be more smushed though. Like you can see, like if you see me, I'm like curled up in here. But now I got an hour long drive this way. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Well, it's not the end of the day yet, but I always like to make sure if I'm not at the store, I get multiple feedings in. So right now I'm gonna feed out a bunch of gromeris, which is just a uh, freshwater invertebrate. And uh, it's mostly, I would say, for bigger fish, like I feed it to goldfish, koi, uh, the turtles, sometimes some African cichlid and stuff like that. It's a pretty big shrimp, and I don't know if the fish kind of love it, but uh, it does color enhance, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and feed that out to the goldfish in quarantine, and then turtles, and probably some goldfish over there as well. Well, that part's done, and I noticed some eggs, so why not show that off? So now you really get to see day in the life of, because all this stuff happens, sometimes I'm like, ah, eh, don't even show, it doesn't even make time, but I keep finding stuff left and right, uh, spawning in the fish room now that I'm out here more often. Uh, but we've got eggs. These are orange lasers. You can see some of the babies down here that are, you know, the breeder raised up, but we've got eggs here. We've also got eggs up here, and we've got some over here as well. And then a bunch back here. And you can see it back here as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm not doing anything special for these. I'm gonna let them raise up. I'm gonna keep feeding. I, you know, I fed them kind of heavy yesterday, so that probably made them spawn, but uh, you know, I'm gonna keep feeding and stuff like that. This tank is not the best for showing this off. Like, the inside hasn't, has, like, hasn't been cleaned since I drilled it and stuff, but that being said, it's a working tank. They are spawning. We're getting lots of algae bloom like on the sponge because it was a newly set up tank, but all this plant came in. The plants are actually probably starving. I need to get an auto feeder probably set up in here and uh, things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and start feeding these guys a little bit. And then over here, I just put these guys into here for now because they're algae eaters and stuff like that. So these are the clown gobies. And you can see they're stressed out. They just moved in. Um, I've got to put meds in here and quarantine them and do all that kind of stuff that I normally do. But there's a lot of hair algae they can come in and eat. And, uh, you know, we'll do a whole tank setup for them because I, I want to breed them and have some fun. So, uh, yeah. I think also I'm going to put some more meds in here. Uh, I believe this black ranch you may have ick. It could also just be some stuff from the crushed coral. But the more I look at it, well, maybe it's just when growth. I'm not quite sure because it's, you know, mostly on its when, as you can see the few white spots there. Now, at home you're going to go, yeah, it's completely ick, but, you know, if I go down here, you know, if I go right next door, so for instance, green water in here, but the ranchers in here, you know, no ick at all, and then also, like, in this tank, no other fish has ick, by the way. Like I've really combed them over and it's like, well, it's just that black fish right there. And the black fish typically show off crud from gravel and stuff a lot more. I've looked down here and uh, none of these guys have it going on. And then I looked in the tote as well and nothing going on there. So then it becomes one of those kind of things like, all right, what are the odds of catching this ick at the very beginning on this one fish versus it's actually just scuzz from the gravel on its slime coat type of deal. And so I'll probably just end up using meds anyway because I'm a little paranoid and uh, you know I want to get that cleaned up if it is a potential problem. But that's why you know we take them out of the totes, we get them into the tanks, and you know long term this will be the process is like stuff gets quarantined for a very long time there, then it slowly comes out here for sale and keeps moving at a slow acceptable pace. So uh, all right, what else do I got to do today? Uh, I know I'm going to try and feed some more food. That's that's an obvious. Uh, and then I want to get the drain working over on the koi, like the goldfish side, because um, that pump was left there not working. So I want to get that auto water change set up. Like It won't auto fill, but at least auto drain. I can run some water through there. 
makes uh, changing water a little easier. Uh, the discus are up here. I need to go grab them, some blood worms probably. And I noticed in this tank, you see right there, they're gonna go through another round of meds as well. So that right there, yeah, they could be stressed from the move, but with it having those nodules in there, kind of the, the bubbles, that's a much more likely that it's actually internal tapeworms and parasites. And it could, I think it's coming from this one at the top there that's skinnier than the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, you know, treat them again for internal parasites. I'm gonna use general cure and uh, yeah. So, you know, it's kind of always an evolving thing. You spend time, you look at the fish, you get a, you get a, a gut feeling of like, is this fish healthy or is it not healthy? Even though it's been through meds, obviously one of the fish didn't get, you know, 100% rid of it, so we're gonna do it again. And that's a constant thing you guys should be doing too, is just evaluating the health of your fish. Is this healthy? Do I need to address this? That type of thing. So being that I gotta medicate these new guys that are me, new to me anyway, and uh, these guys hadn't been medicated since they came in from outside, I can do double dose there, you know, as in I'm gonna treat these guys and the Tanganyikan gobies. These are a cichlid, by the way, if you didn't know, from Lake Tanganyika. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get meds out, get that going, and then I'm gonna go to the hardware store and buy a pump and a timer and things like that. So stay tuned. Well, I've got the new sump pump installed. It seems to be working. Um, yeah, not much. Not a, lot, not, a lot, ah, not a lot more I can say about that besides we're changing water. That's a good thing. Um, yeah, it seems to be keeping a steady rate. I was really filling it hard over here with a hose and water from a goldfish uh, bin. So. It quite won't. It won't quite keep up with that, but I think that's because I go down to the five eighths hose. And I think that's the main reason I run into uh, some issues there. Oh, what am I doing over here? I'm making a leak or something. Something's going on over here. Why do I always find something? Like, where's all this water coming from? What is going on up here? Look at that. You see that? That's not good. That is not good. So, I mean, I gotta figure out what's going on there. Like, I don't know why it's clogged. Maybe I didn't uh, cut the hose at an angle originally, or maybe I'm just flooding it. Maybe it's coming out because I'm flooding it. Yeah, all right, so I gotta go figure it out. So I figured out my problem. Without getting behind the tanks again, basically, I had that hose pumping water, and it was pumping it up the line, even though it drains that way, because the hose had fallen over, kind of, and so, it was pumping all the water that way, which normally would never be a problem because we're pumping, but because we were pumping, that became a problem because it just created this water jet that tried to hold all the water like a dam over here. Well, and then it started overflowing. So all I did is make it so it pumps it down the line now, and that fixes it because you pump it down the line, it goes down the drain and no problem. So now I'm finishing up water changes on the, uh, the goldfish tank behind me and getting ready for the live stream. I'm watching the KG Tropical live stream kind of in between eating some lunch as well and uh, Yeah, basically just getting things done. You know Sunday's kind of a day where I Don't do anything too crazy big because I know I gotta do the live stream and I gotta you know I don't I can't get in the middle of a project and then go do a live stream and just have it be like oh water's going on the floor or something like that so uh, we'll see what else. So I got about an hour left before the live stream starts. We'll see if I can find anything else that I'm doing that's you know, monumental. Because if it's just feeding fish, maybe I won't show that. But anyway, back to work for me. So here it is. The 240 gallon, 8 feet long, 2 foot by 2 foot. Here's a stand. Got all this for 500 bucks. Uh, and then I took the, uh, the Gobi Cichlids and then this tank for another 75 bucks. So now I just got to make a spot for it in my garage until I figure out where it's going. Uh, you've seen in previous videos, I've talked about it going in the goldfish room, I've talked about it going in the main fish room there, and lately I've been thinking about maybe it becomes a new backdrop to like the live stream and stuff like that. So, uh, waiting for my wife to get home because I can't move this alone, but I'm going to get some of this stuff ready like moving this tank out and this piece of wood and stuff like that. So, that's what I'm doing. We're, you know, counting down the clock here. I think it's uh, about uh, 40 minutes until the live stream starts, so these are the types of things I do right before I go live. There she sits, the 240 gallon. We finished the live stream. My wife 
was gracious enough to help me move it in. Now I just gotta make room, paint the room if I'm gonna do it. We'll see if I actually get to utilize this in the studio or if it just gets utilized somewhere else, but not a bad 500 bucks if I don't say so myself. All right, that's all I can get done. It's seven o'clock already. Well, it's after seven because the live stream is in. Move that stuff. Now I gotta feed, close up, and edit because in the morning you guys are gonna wanna watch another video, so I gotta make it happen. Time to feed. Well, today I fed catfish chips, which has wood in it, helps digestion, it's good for all the plecos and snails, and then fish eat it as well, but it's got high fiber content, so it helps flush them out, because as you probably saw in this video, I've been feeding fish all day long, so I wanna make sure they're flushed out before I start feeding them other stuff tomorrow. So, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow, and I hope you have a good day.